I want a police that won't ask me anything for the boys. I want a decent salary that is paid on time. It has to happen with good laws, proper funding, training, and cooperation. If it happens, if it happens, if it happens. to you. Welcome on Safra Breakfast Show. This is where we have interesting conversation and of course updating you on happenings around Nigeria and the world. My name is Yetunde Oshubi. Welcome. It's good to see you once again. Welcome to Safra Breakfast Show live on TV Gota, live on Facebook, live on YouTube, YouTube. live in your lives. Um, live we, in your living pleased, room. Yeah. <laughs> we're pleased to have you joining us for the right uh, yet again. It's a beautiful uh, Wednesday morning, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Mm. I, I'm loving the weather. Yeah, 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 me mm. too. So, by the way, I'm about to suggest something to you which I know you're gonna, you know. So, if you know, don't. You're, you're not going to accept. If you know, but don't I am going to. Don't just make go the there. make the offer. Still, nonetheless, uh, because I think there are a lot of people out there who could actually benefit a lot from this. So, I've been doing some research and reading a lot about cold showers and its health benefits, right? <laughs> and I couldn't help but notice how it is it has actually transformed me personally in a very significant way okay so this morning on our way to work brenda kept complaining about how cold the weather is mm. right and i and i and i found myself wondering like is it possible that brenda is just feverish and then i remembered perhaps the cold showers are actually working mm. kicking in and it doesn't matter how early it is it doesn't matter how late it is i always go for uh, go for cold showers oh, really and maybe you should try it really it has a good number of you know health benefits oh okay I mean, it could be uncomfortable because of the the cold, but uh, oh, why would I want to <laughs> yeah, make but, myself uncomfortable? But, but what, I'm say, what, I, what I'm saying is, it really does have. Well, some you know, you know, well, you know hot bath also, you know, do have benefits, especially when you're Does stressed. It? Yes. Yeah. I think when you're stressed, what you need is cold showers. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, we have we we differ. On especially first. in the mornings. We differ on the no, especially in the evenings before you go to bed. Yeah. I mean, a mixture of cold and hot bath also, you know, does some very therapeutic things for your mm. body but you know the most important thing is cold showers work try it out today okay uh, that's what i want likewise to hot bath works <laughs> when you're stressed no so. bath also works if oh, you're not really? going to work <laughs> if you're not going to work with people and you're not going to stink the place sure <laughs> it, it works too you so. know that is a no no <laughs> anyway <laughs> there might, are people who might go without bathing that. for days mm. yeah they are and uh, I just wonder how they feel. I don't want to meet them though. So. Yeah, neither do I, but I wonder, I just, I wonder how they feel, you know, I mean, how, how they smell to themselves and even how they feel mingling with people going, going about That's doing it. their it's, thing. Um, there's something about personal hygiene that we have to find a way to publicly um, educate people because I, I do feel there are certain things that people are not, um, sensitized about mm. and it's unfortunate that actually these people come from homes where uh, they, they, they somehow did not get the orientation that personal hygiene is very very important especially as very very poor from I mean I don't want to be gender specific but I think generally people should take uh, personal hygiene very it's very, very seriously serious, yes because uh, infections are everywhere um, germs are everywhere and also I think it just when you when you're relating with people when you're dealing with people you have to consider and listen, I say cleanliness is next to godliness, so I'm just going to leave it there. Because I think that's what most people can relate to. Mm. Cleanliness mm. is next to godliness. Most dirty people are not god people. So, okay, I don't you don't want to be grouped in this particular category. So, I yeah. said I don't godly. I mean, cleanliness is next to godliness. Isn't it the opposite? The other way? Mm, 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 <laughs> so that, that's mm, all I'm saying. I'm zipping it up. Anyway. I'm not going to say the next thing I have in mind. <laughs> anyway, um, the... Cash withdrawal limit uh, situation is getting a lot more 
reaction from mm. people from different quarters and um, I don't know, I, th I still think that regardless of what you do in this country, you know, most like any other country also, uh, people are still going to complain. People are bound to complain regardless of how, how well intentioned a government policy is, especially at the early stages here today. Mm -hmm. Because people are not susceptible to change as you would love people to be. Sure. Even though people know that change is inevitable, of course. we're not really accepting of it, right? We don't really want things to change uh, that often. Well, uh, except when well, we're in a bad situation, to, yeah. we want things to change as soon as possible to a good situation. However, when we're used to doing something, it it really it doesn't come as a welcome change. development if we have to change it, especially if, that, if there's going to be a level of discomfort yeah. with that sort of change. And you can imagine when it comes to financial regulations, the discomfort is going to be very obvious, especially when you've been told that you're, you're, you're going to have very little access or a regulated or limited access to certain amount of cash that you can hold in, um, you know, in hard currency, in, in, you know, uh, in, in cash. And I don't know. I just feel as if people should should find a way to be okay with it because yeah, it doesn't look like from the body language of the CBN or the federal government that they're going to give in to this pressure, this mountain of pressure that's coming in from uh, members of the public. Hmm. Um, like yeah, well, it is it is so obvious because even the governor of the CBN is also not going back on his word, saying this policy has come to stay. So the earlier we accept it, the better. Despite pressure from even the House of Representatives mm. when, when, when he was invited and all of that. Um, change is difficult to accept, but once you get used to it, you don't see it as being difficult. You just you just walk through it, you know, seamlessly. And and, and, mm. and that is something I believe in the long run we're going to uh, appreciate what benefits this particular policy has come with. Mm. Uh, but at this point in time, it is difficult for people because we're used to having cash, transacting with cash, and you don't have cash, you feel as if you're sick mm. <laughs> to a larger extent. I mean, and, it's uh, one thing to not have cash because you actually don't have money. Mm -hmm. And so it's another you have, <laughs> I get you. There's a difference between not no, no, having no, cash I get you. I get and not you. having money. <laughs> <laughs> right? You can have money and not have cash. But, but when you don't have money, you shouldn't even be in the conversation about cash Is that or, personal or experience from? I mean, I'm just saying, yeah, just know, to, that, that, to be blunt, right? <laughs> when you don't have money, you don't have it cash, you don't have it in your account. Okay. But when, you, when you're complaining about cash, maybe you have it in your bank account, but you need actually the... The, the, the dough, you know, you know yeah, filling it. Filling it in your hand because you need to use it. Absolutely. So speaking most, most, people, like... most people don't have money. Okay. So right. let's let's not Agreed. get into that. Agree. No, okay. no, no. I'm not going to contend <laughs> contend with that. Right. But the most important thing is we need to go cashless, mm. and that is the whole aim of you know the government. Uh, what you you still can do your electronic transfers, transactions, uh, you know, electronically and all of that, but reducing the amount of cash you know that goes around that it's, we handle. It's cost effective. And all and this, very, is what, this is what I think a lot of people don't understand. Cost effective in the sense that it saves us money. All the money that we're printing, all the money that you're using, they don't come for free. Of course. Right? You will Government spend has money to, pay to, 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 to print, print money, them, yeah. Right? Because you there are resources involved in printing money. Um, and that in itself is something that people have to consider. If we're trying to cost down the uh, cut down the cost of governance, this is one of these are one of those mm. things mm. that we should consider on the metric, right? Because we have to come year in year out quarterly i don't know how frequent they have to print it but i am very sure as they destroy mutilated notes they have to print Prince, new ones yeah. to augment to uh, the circle and, and and also you have to remember more than two-thirds of the uh, hard currency that we have i mean the cash that we have in circulation are not in banks mm. people have stashed them and we've seen some of them destroyed because yeah. of years of deterioration and things like that so while those funds were in Baku bags Ghana must go Ghana must go and every other you know place that we're stashed in CBN is thinking of printing new ones so that they can inject it into uh, the system because there's there's limited cash in circulation so so yeah we go cashless we save ourselves the stress of having to deal with all this um, unfortunate and that will uh, also situations. cut down on the on, on the rate of corruption so to say because if you are if you're caught with huge amount of monies at home mm. 
that you have to, you know, explain. You have yeah. to, you have to answer questions. Right. But monies that go through your bank account, which of course is monitored and it is, you know, to the eyes of, you know, mm. the watchdogs. Mm. Uh, I think that is going to also uh, uh, give room for people to be uh, corrupt, free, yeah. so to say. I, 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 still I think so. Listen, I think people are the corruption is still going to continue. It will. However, but not, this, not this this this, this makes it easier for the officials, for the agencies, anti graft agencies to track to, you. Yeah. Right. Um, because ICPC is also talking about tracking down, and we just saw the recent um, report, don't, didn't we, with regards to corruption within government institutions, uh, um, yeah. Ministry of Education, Education Supreme especially. Court, fifteen mm. others. 131 agencies not following due process, not doing due diligence, uh, being unethical with uh, financial transactions. And NFI, you just said also that they're going to track down and prison time awaits any government official mm. that contravenes the laid down rules and regulations. Yeah. No more cash transfers, no more cash, uh, you know, um, engagement mm. between government and mm. third parties. Mm. It still has to go through the banks, and that is the right way uh, to go about it. So let's see how this it's whole all thing all in a bit to monitor unfolds. and know what is happening. Yeah, you know, exactly. In the we can if you if you can track it, then of course you can easily um, you know make certain conclusions about mm -hmm. where the money went and why it went wherever it is that you might be uh, going to. Anek has been receiving some knocks. If you can mm -hmm. uh, briefly talk about that uh, for the statement made by the national chairman of the electoral umpire saying that um, because of the security situation yeah, they say, they, there's, there's, there's a election, chance that yeah. the elections might not hold or we postpone. could actually postpone it and I think um, saying it might not hold actually doesn't sit well with me mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. cancellation of the elections not really I don't think we should even accept that as a probability no, or possibility whichever all. English you might want to postponement, use postponement yes Postponement um, also should be a plan B, B that is not handy. When, when we should all do other our options possible are, best. Are, are, are Yesterday we should do our possible best to stick to the timetable. I agree. Right? I agree. Because that you. means that we're very serious about the democracy that we're practicing. And we're very serious about wanting change. And also it doesn't indict the capacity of the Nigerian police to do their job. It doesn't mm. indict the DSS mm. uh, capability to do the job. The Nigerian military, basically, the security architecture is not indicted if everything goes according to plan. Mm -hmm. These problems, these challenges are surmountable, in my they view. Are. And I think it is the general understanding of the Nigerian people that these issues are surmountable. So let's surmount it now and let's go ahead with our elections. I mean, INEC doesn't have any policing powers mm -hmm. outside of the elections. Mm -hmm. So I can understand why he's saying that this is a possibility. I mean, you're dealing with a lot of risk. Uh, factors you put in core members, young people who are going to be your ad hoc staff who, who are form. not even experienced whatsoever, in, in and you're putting them in danger, in you're putting them yeah. in harm's way, southeast, northwest, okay. north central. There are so many volatile areas that elections could hold, but the security of the elections cannot be guaranteed. So, hopefully, let's address that and then. We'll find a way uh, out of this. Uh, yeah, this mess. It, it shouldn't be left to INEC alone. Um, the government, as, as because President Muhammad Buhari has promised a lot of, uh, uh, had made a lot of promises to Nigerians, you know, what he wants to leave as legacy before he, 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 he exits yeah. office and all of that. So I think he should take this seriously as well, yeah. ensuring that the election is not and it's service. free, yeah, yeah, it's free of uh, whatever kind of others. Okay, let's talk to uh, what we have on our history timeline this morning. Today being the 11th day of January 2023. Still counting down to the election day, uh, about 46 days now to elections or thereabout. Is it up to 40? Yeah, I think so. I don't think it's up to 40. It is up to 40. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, for some, uh, uh, is it not 24th? 24th of February? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, yeah. So for 43 days, I think. So, oh, good. You should give your math teacher a bonus. <laughs> your primary school math teacher, because this is primary school stuff. <laughs> Seriously? <And> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk to uh, what developments we have on our history channel 1964. U.S. Surgeon General Luther L. Terry announced that cigarette, cigarette smoking is linked to lung cancer. Mm. Until date, 
we still have a lot of smokers who have come down with lung problems and you know what that really means a lot yeah. of people and despite warnings even at the back of the parks so yeah not at the back anymore they're actually on the front of the oh okay the park yeah because uh, I, I can't remember seeing any park anytime you know so, what so it's a it's it's part of western culture where you, you know you pretty much choose your poison is it alcohol or is it cigarettes, cigarettes. And unfortunately, we as Africans have also accepted and adopted that. And someone made a very interesting, mm. made, made a very interesting post on Twitter um, this week uh, that I saw. He said there is no record, and I'm not an advocate of uh, weed smoking either. Um, he said there is no record of weed or marijuana or mm. anything else that you might want to call it, Mary Jane, uh, of of it killing anyone. Right? Uh, yeah, but it is illegal. But it is illegal. Agreed. Even though there, there could be medicinal usage exactly. of it, but it is illegal. However, not only have we linked cigarettes to lung cancer, there are hundreds of thousands of people dying from it every yeah, single year. However, it is not illegal to smoke cigarettes. You can imagine that. So, so the so double standard. I mean, this one, so the one is that proven is to be a killer. Very not harmful. But it's, <laughs> but it's still, it's still it's legal. legal. This one, not harmful. It could get you high, don't yeah. get me wrong. However, it is illegal. But okay. it doesn't kill you. That is... Uh, anyway. All right. Uh, okay, no. I'm not going to say that's it. The, that's the world that we live in. It's a whole industry of you know, confusion that you don't want to step in. Anyway, let's take you back to 2008. Because on this day back in 2008, New Zealand mountain climber and explorer Sir Edmund Hillary, uh, who with the Tibetan mountaineer, mountaineer Tenzing Noje, I hope I got that name correct, was the first to summit Mount Everest and he died at the age of 88 on this day. Uh, to summit a mountain means you get to the very top of uh, the mountain. I mean, I love to hike, but I'm not sure about climbing mountains because it's a uh, it's a very tasking one. It, yeah, it is. Last time I tried to do something like that was when we were doing a documentary, I think back in 2001, uh, 2021, I beg your pardon, what did I say? 2001. Um, we are trying to get to the uh, summit of, um, what do you call it? Uh, the Adin Waterfalls. That's, that's when I think. It, that's a it is a mountain. Come on up. Mountain. What's your problem? Come don't, don't try to minimize my achievement here today because I did what you cannot do and you're trying to make it look simple. I'm offended, really. I'm really deeply offended. You, you say it's not much, it's a hill? Really? <laughs> okay. That happened on this day back in 2008 and this happened in 2023. <laughs> where yesterday is just minimizing <laughs> my achievement and making it look like... Yeah, the waterfall you say? Yeah, have you ever been to the summit? I have been there. Really? Of course. With your own legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was. I, right. I use. I use a a a, a, a cable car. <laughs> okay. I don't want like to say that. you're lying, but I don't believe you. Anyway, let, let's make progress. <laughs> All right. Still on the lineup for today, we'll be looking at uh, developments in the education sector. Of course, uh, the higher institutions are proposing a hike in uh, a tuition fee uh, for a lot of uh, for the students across our federal universities in Nigeria. So we'll be talking about the implication of this. We'll also talk about, you know, some reasons why ASO is still bent on what they want to achieve, you know, by going on strike and all of the foot and back between them and government and all that, given, you know, I mean, resulting to this particular one in the, yeah. in the country. There was a recent protest by students here in Northern Nigeria also to protest this uh, mm -hmm. blind hike in tuition fees. We'll also get to, get to delve into a little bit of politics, especially with regards to the developments in PDP here in Adamawa State as the campaign train uh, gets back uh, into action uh, ahead of the gubernatorial polls this March. All right, part of our lineup, of course, is a review of major headlines on some select national dailies in the country. We'll also have your uh, comments on our Facebook page where we uh, interact with you, likewise, our punchline, which is our editorial on the program. So, all of this. I'm going to be dished out to you, but after this break.
I need the police that can respond to emergencies first. I want the equipment I need to do my job. I want a police that would harass or arrest me for no just reason. I want to be valued for my work, not feared by honest people. I want a police that won't ask me anything for the boys. I want a decent salary that is paid on time. If it is if it happen, with good laws, proper funding, training, and cooperation. If it happens, if it happens, if it happens. Welcome back, and uh, right about now, we're going to be uh, looking at major headlines on some select national dailies in the country. Today, we have the Daily Trust newspaper, we have the Punch newspaper, the Guardian and Nation newspapers. So, yeah, I'll be doing the, the, the run around uh, this morning. Mm. Hopefully, we don't have to uh, say much about uh, some of these things because uh, they are stories that um, have been developing for, for quite some time. Of course. All right, uh, let's start off with a look at the front page of the Guardian newspaper for today, 11th of January, 2023. All right, the front page of the Guardian. Uh, some very interesting and telling stories. 2023 elections as insecurity st uh, stokes fear. FG allays concern over cancellation as they need to, because <laughs> it is uh, the job of the federal government to guarantee security of lives and property and under that is security of our elections also. So uh, we're getting some reassurances. If you're one of those who are skeptical about the messaging, or well, the federal government is saying, listen, fear not. Mm. The elections will hold uh, as expected under a free and fair uh, environment. And hopefully that uh, expectation will be met uh, at the end of the day. Resident doctors write government on impending nationwide strike. We are at it Here again. we <clears throat> go again. New Year, new, new. strike actions uh, crippling mm. the healthcare sector yet again. Page 3 has more on this one uh, for you. Afeba Balola tasks rich Nigerians, philanthropists on education sector revival. Don't hold your breath. They're not going to do anything to help. Uh, if the rich people are going to do something about it, the best thing they can do about it yet in there for me, I think, is to establish their own universities. That's what they. That's, <laughs> that's what they've been doing. That's what they're most likely going to do. So. Um, that's even what they've been doing. No, let's not put our eggs in that basket because really it's not going to change anything. And uh, federal government plans collaboration with communities to secure railway infrastructure. I thought when the Kaduna thing happened last March, mm. I thought we would have a holistic approach to addressing this concern. And I remember the conversation yesterday we had about um, insecurity and the discussion was around why didn't we foresee something like what happened in Edo, for instance, right? And I, I, I think there is, this, um, there is this obvious inability of the powers that be to be proactive about some of these things, mm. right? It's... it's <sighs> It's better to be safe than sorry. So it doesn't cost as much to say, let's consider this happening anywhere else where there's a rail station, where there's a railway exactly. service, right? Exactly. Let's consider that there's a possibility that these criminal elements are working over time to try to inundate everything else that the federal government is trying to keep in place, right? Let's envision that. It's let's just similar to let's the prepare, Let's prepare for the worst mm. and hope for the best, mm. right? Mm. Yeah. But that's not what we're doing, mm. isn't it, Yetinde? That's not what we're doing. And it's it's rather unfortunate. It's just uh, the same approach we had. We, I mean, we 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 used during the whole insurgency, the whole Boko Haram thing. We the Chibo it, girls. Yeah. We thought and it then was just... happened. And then and it's many other attacks happened, yeah. So we have we have railways in, 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 in 
very good uh, percentage of uh, mm. uh, uh, the uh, southeast and southwestern Nigeria, and ex just around the north is where mm. you know the rail stations are not really mm. you know functional. But you go to the southeast, you go to the I mean southwest. west, yeah, you you still have this uh, railways functioning very effectively. But why don't we really secure them because they are also these of collaborations are very important, and I would have imagined that this would have been worked on long before now. I don't know why this is be suddenly becoming like a, a new idea mm. that, oh, we have to collaborate with communities so that we can protect, uh, you know, these communities. Let's go back to the front page of the Guardian newspaper. There's this giant um, basin. This is almost a basin yet today. This is not a pothole. This indeed is a basin. No, this is not a pothole. Oh, this is at least a, a pool. Uh, and this is... Um, an earth at dam? The, yeah, at the heart of <laughs> at the heart of Lagos. So uh, it's still this dry season, but this is a spot on Lagos Abekuta Federal Highway. This is not funny. It remains flooded. There's, there's, a, there's a similar situation. there's a similar there's a similar uh, you know nature of how bad roads are in Nigeria. A similar one along uh, I think on your way to Mubi or before mm. you get to to Mubi. I mm. can't remember exactly the community. You almost go. In fact, if you're coming from a distance, you will not see a vehicle that is within that particular road, you know, just trying to maneuver mm. out of ha that ditch. Mm. That's, that's the best description I can give that. And when it rains, it will be worse than this. Lagos is the fifth cap... Um, and you have fifth, all these politicians flying that road. has the fifth largest economy in Africa um, a couple of years ago. I, I still think it is. But infrastructure-wise, Lagos is still a mess. Very, very. I bad mean, point. all of the developments that uh, you've seen in Lagos is is not half of what Lagos needs to be. But anyway, uh, here are some of the writers. Uh, Twenty-seven percent of Lagosians yet to cite, yet to cite right. new notes. Uh, they're talking about um, the narrow design yeah. policy, which has come under pressure, right? So it says twenty-seven percent of Lagosians yet to see yet to cite new banknotes. I don't know. Maybe they've been hiding in a hole, but most people have seen it. Uh, customers seek six-month extension on January 31st deadline. Let's get that out of the way. It's not going to happen. Six months, that's just way too much time. CBN under pressure to extend old note uh, demonetization. Afeshua says subject, implement uh, subject, subject, subject implementation rather to evaluation and adjustment. Bankers making brisk business over lapses as VIPs mop up available volume. Yusuf insists rigid implementation unnecessary. Here's what I don't like about uh, The Guardian. Who is Yusuf and who is Feshwa? Like, we don't know them. So, anyway, uh, that is it on the front page of The Guardian newspaper for today. Shall we take a look at uh, The Daily Trust? All right. The Daily Trust is the next paper to look at. Okay, at the very top of uh, the front page of the Daily Trust, it talks about uh, Atiku meeting UK officials on economy and security and, of course, other issues. Uh, that's the presidential candidate for the yeah. People's Democratic so him Party. Learn, so yeah. him learn in, uh, in, okay. uh, in UK uh, two days ago. Hmm. Had a meeting yesterday, and I think uh, soon he'll be back in the country. So To continue yeah. the talk. Yeah. Okay, uh, this one says, I have fulfilled pledge to tackle Boko Haram. This is coming from President Muhammad Buhari, and to him, he has done his best. Well, I think it's both yes and no, in the sense, yes, because they're not a threat as they used to be, to uh, be honest, if we're going to be honest about it, and plus these Chukanos mm. have made a significant difference to mm. the fight, and um, yes, we're winning, but are they still a threat? I think I think so. Yeah. Especially in the outskirts of uh, Borno State and parts of Yobi. But yeah, Boko Haram is not what it used to be. But you have the and we don't want it to. You have the Borno governor also saying, you know, Borno State is as safe as any other place. Mm, not as any other place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's safe to a certain degree, but not as safe as you would like it to be. Okay. Well, in other news, this is talking about brain drain. It says federal government to hire Nigerian doctors abroad. Well, a lot of them are still moving on the jump pass on. Yes, in the moving on. I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna hold my breath over this one. All right, let's talk about insecurity as it is put on the Daily Trust front page this morning. It talks about Knox Trail INEX statement on election postponement and cancellation. Mm -hmm. And writers to that says, 
We want insecurity may jeopardize polls, according to ACF. Mm. That's Area Consultative. Area Consultative Forum. Yeah. Consultation Forum. Mm. Well, this one talks about, uh, okay, we won't accept postponement according to Afeni Ferry, another pressure group, and uh, hold Buhari APC responsible if election does not hold, if insecurity, you know. What, <laughs> why, over, why is, uh, why is Delitra saying if? Let's go with the statement already. Complete what's, the statement, right? Yeah. All right, PDP is saying that. And this says it's a call for action according to CSOs mm. and no cause for alarm according to federal government. So, mm. where do you lie? I mean, where does uh, the truth lie? Mm. Uh, with the federal government or with the pressure group, you know, still bringing the warnings to, to, to four or... People are going to talk regardless. Uh, and <sighs> I think that's the, just the only way to interpret it. However, it remains to be seen whether we're going to have a free, fair and credible election but our expectation is that it is going to be free, fair, and credible. Mm -hmm. EFCC declared six winners for Lekki Peninsula property. Uh, the story is on page 11. 51 arrested in Lagos as gunmen opened fire on NDLE operatives. Very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Get the detail on page 35. How railway unbounding will impact the industry is, is, a, is an article you can also follow. Is it James Ochoa, the former minister, that the ser the served uh, during the first tenure? Well, I wouldn't know until uh, they read up. But they said Ochoa. Uh, it's the only Ochoa I know. Now, race to National Assembly, Kaduna North, uh, inside rep, while you have Samaila Erufai, son, tug of war. Um, well, <laughs> I uh, wish them good luck in, I in this particular. I sympathize with Representative <laughs> Samaila, but... Um, I don't think he's going to win this tug of war. I don't think he's going to win this battle. Oh, anyway, really? yeah, fighting Erufai's son. You might as well just fight the father. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah. These are some of the headlines uh, this morning uh, across some of these select national dailies. We uh, encourage you to take a look at uh, other papers also, but more importantly, uh, do some further reading. The headlines can only sell you the story, but there's a lot more information mm. behind the headlines. So do the need for grab a copy from your vendor. We'll take a quick break. Punchline is coming up uh, next. That's of course after we take a look at your comments on social media. Day, we are exposed to a variety of information from the larger society and on social media. How credible are such messages? Nobody loves to be deceived. Nobody wants to be fooled. Stop the creation and spread of fake news. Don't be in a hurry to share messages. Verify facts and source before spreading. Fake news is harmful. John. I am a Nigerian. 
I live among my people. I love my country. My religion is Nigeria. My religion is my people. I hate to be hated. I hate not to be loved. You are my brother. You are my sister. I deserve to live my life free from every hatred. You deserve to also live. Why the bitterness? Why the anger? Why draw a sword? Are we no longer one people? Please, let's stop the hatred. Let's stop the killing. Let's bring back love. Let's hold our hands like we used to. Remember, our religion is Nigeria. Your religion is my religion. My religion is your religion. And your religion is my religion because we are Nigerians. We love to live. Let's live our lives to the fullest. For more on all discussions on Safi Breakfast Show, follow us on Facebook. Visit www.facebook.com forward slash Safia on TV Gota. This is Safia Connect where we interact with you via Facebook. Okay, we ask that you respond to this particular talking point that talks about the reactions of customers to supposed increase in electricity tariff by distribution companies in Nigeria. Now, let's get the first comment from Kunini James. Kunini says, first, it was education. Now it is electricity. I mean, what's the focus of our leaders? What direction are we heading to? It's a shame this country keeps going the reverse of development. We have enough sunlight to power the whole of Nigeria using solar energy, but the government don't even care. We have enough natural resources to make every Nigerian have a quality life. What are our resources used for? Okay, uh, more questions than answer, but Kunini, you are very right. These are some of the things we have in abundance that should be used in this country to better our lives. Abdul Mumuni Aliu says, it is most unfortunate. The upward re reward is unwarranted since there is no regular and uninterrupted power supply yet. Agreed with that as well. Hakim Abba says, very sad. The companies are operating like we don't have regulators. Well, who do you blame? The regulatory agencies are supposed to be on their necks and, of course, ensuring that uh, these commodities or the, the supply of this particular uh, service is very much regulated that a lot of Nigerians will be able to afford. Kenneth Abole Lena says, a very disgraceful and discomfort or discomforting, he means to say. So these are some of the comments uh, on our Facebook page. And a lot of Nigerians don't even know that there is a review or a hike in this particular, you know, electricity tariff. Go buy uh, or go vent for uh, your units, and that is where you'll be able to notice, you know, some kind of uh, differences or changes in the amount of uh, uh, units you, you tend to vent vis-a-vis -vis amount of money you are spending while vending. Anyways, that's a comment we can take on Facebook. Thank you very much for those of you who have really, you know, dropped a comment on that particular platform. But if you want to be part of it, it's on Facebook.com forward slash Safi on TV. Go tell, go there, like the page, and of course, be part of all the conversations that are happening there. Your comments may also be part of the show. So we'll take a break. Myself and Abdullah will come back and take Punchline, which is our editorial. This is Ikolo Community, and this is Otana Community. As election time nears, politicians arrive with money. Members of Ikolo Community sell their vote, but Otana Community refuses to be settled. They vote 
for the candidates of their choice. I do solemnly swear that everything After I've election, done... the Kolo school needs repairs. But the politician has already settled them. <laughs> Otana Hospital needs repairs too. Otana community demands action and gets results. Your vote is powerful. It builds the future. Don't be settled. No, si don't look. No, si don't look. No, no, si don't look. Oh. look oh. When nang garun kaswa babani, when nang kuma garun kuka jireni. Kamari deza iye karatu. En siyasa sin kaso. Ya kui. Al umar garun kaswa baba. Sin sel da ure ansu. Ama al umar kuka jire. Sin ki sin sel da tas ure. Sin ni za bene bisa chan chanta. Bayan za bi. Makarantan kasuwa babba na bukatar gyara amma sun riga sun sayar da yancin su shi ma asibitin kuka jere na bukatar gyara al'ummar kuka jere sun mika kokin sa a gyara kuma sun cimma borin su kuri'ar kana da tasiri tana inganta makoma kada ka sayar da yancin ka no, si don't look. No, si don't look. Where could I no si don't look? Oh, look oh. Welcome back. Well, let's quickly take uh, our punchline and give our two cents to this particular <coughs> conversation. Uh, it's talking about what we see, you know, some content on social media, and this one talks about a Nigerian, well, of course, Nigerians who were outraged by a video gone viral of a man seen smoking a substance suspected to be marijuana and then forcing it into the mouth of a baby girl he is carrying. They stopped by the video Nigerians took, a took to Twitter to tag the Nigerian police force, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, and other security agencies calling for the arrest of the man in the video and his accomplices. Wow. What is the Nigerian society becoming? And a lot of people are not really uh, interested in what is happening. We just see some of these contents and we just flip through. Uh, we don't. It's a good thing that uh, the, the the security agencies, you know, concerned are actually uh, alerted and their attention is drawn to this particular development. But the point is, why do we have? Is that person really mentally stable? In the first instance, I think these are some of the assessments they need to carry out to know to ascertain, you know, the level of his uh, uh, stability mentally. And, 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 and otherwise. But the point here is everything that you see around you should concern you. 
You don't know who, who, who will be the next victim for such an act. Today is a baby. He's carrying. Tomorrow he may introduce a son, I mean, the child of his neighbor to it. And before you know it, the society becomes uh, a marijuana mm. smoking society. And that is what, what we want Listen, to see. And if, first of all, my concerns initially when I saw um, the video, I didn't play it. Uh, I, I actually saw snapshots of, of, um, mm. of what happened. And you can easily tell. Um, there's, there's a phenomenon that you have to understand about the Nigerian social media space. Uh, so you have a couple of um, bloggers who own some of these uh, social media handles. So they're very good at um, spreading gossip, spreading viral videos, right? Because they want the traffic. They want the traffic and they want their handle to yeah. be the go-to handle uh, for sharing some of these of course, things. Because they make money. And we can always debate how unethical, how immoral that whole idea is because it's just attention seeking. Mm. You put provocative things, disturbing things on your platform because you know people are going to go to it and view it and that viewership is all they're actually looking for. They want that traffic, right? And, and that I think to me is very, very sad. However, the idea of going viral nowadays, people do so many stupid, immoral, un-African things. I say un-African because it's a copycat situation. Mm. Yeah. I'm used to seeing so many viral videos of you know the western world europeans americans mm -hmm. mostly uh do some of these things because they're always seeking external validation so they do stupid stuff mm -hmm. they do outrageous stuff in fact there's so many programs that you could watch whether it's america's funniest videos mm -hmm. ridiculousness mm -hmm. or you know there's so many shows if you care to watch right on on any of these channels you can find americans doing stupid things just because they, they're trying to get attention and now, Yechunde, I can tell you for the past two years, after especially seeing what's happening on Twitter and mm. on Instagram, you have so many accounts, so many people, young people, doing so many stupid, ridiculous stuff because they want that attention. They yeah. want to go viral. Mm. So they'll do so many things. Whether the prank is on someone, someone else, yeah. or they're doing harm to themselves, or they're exposing themselves. And at the end of the day, you, you just tend to wonder, when did we get to this place where there's nothing about the moral, moral good it, now, yeah. there's no there's no moral compass, and everybody's just trying to get clicks and likes now. That is the end game, and, to get and, noticed, and, yeah. to get those clicks and, and likes, to be the shares. talk of the town. It doesn't matter whether you're the talk of the town. It used to be that if you want to be the talk of the town, try and be, do, something do something good, good, right? Maybe be a distinction student. Maybe be the best graduating student, right? That used to be the ideal. And usually when you're talk of the town is in a negative way, you've done something really, really bad. And, you, and that shame robs up on not just you, but on your family. So there's that sense of you're trying to protect the name of the family, the name of your community, mm. the name of your clan, mm. the name of your tribe. You're trying to protect those things. It actually used to mean something. Yeah. Nowadays, for a sick individual to do what he did to that toddler, I mean, I wish I can say I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised. Because I know mm -hmm. a lot of people are really craving this validation here today on social media, that they will do anything. They will post themselves half naked or even naked. They will post themselves doing embarrassing things to their parents, to their friends, and it's 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 really the, the society that we're living in today. And I and I just and I just wish they would wake up from this uh, you know dark reality and mm. realize that we're we're really harming ourselves. I mean, we see that's true. Do you remember the video of the 13, 14 year old kids? Yeah, they were going yeah, to Lagos to learn. No, 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 okay, those no okay. they were they were going, going to, to Lagos, Lagos to from Delta Yahoo, Yahoo. to yeah to learn Yahoo because that's what their parents wanted them to do. And do you yeah, also remember the story of the 15 or 16 year old boy that took his friend to a native doctor because he wanted to do money ritual? ritual. And, and, and unfortunately, these are some of the things that we normalize today. Even in our entertainment industry, mm. even in, you in know, movies, in, you know, uh, social, on social media with the skit makers, mm. with the comedies, mm. mm. they're always, Promotes you know, aligned mm. with things that are despicable, that are immoral, that have really just broken our social fabric as a society and i almost don't and that's that's really one of the reasons why i don't fancy myself uh, in that sort of society because listen it's everything every, the bar is so low yet the bar is so low that you don't have you don't consider 
values anymore, anymore. Okay. do anything for the likes <clears throat> do anything for the for the retreats do anything for the for for insta blog or linda ikeji mm. or niger post to repost what what your content is no matter how ridiculous it is no matter how outrageous um it is you have kids you know tattooing themselves and then recording their parents getting the reaction and stuff like that you, People do anything to go viral now. No, my, my, well, I just, would also it's advocate. Just really sad. It is. I would advocate that if such people or these culprits are caught and whatever kind of punishment is written mm. on them should come back to the social media mm. so that we will know that some of the content we put there are not really appreciated by a lot of Nigerians or by a lot of people who view them. And possibly that can also serve as a deterrent to others who would want to also go on these platforms to post whatever it is mm. uh, 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 that they do. Let us promote morality so, instead of immorality. So, someone once said, we live in a generation of very unhappy people with very beautiful pictures, <laughs> with smiling pictures, and, 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 and it just speaks to it, really. I mean, uh, people would do anything to mm. get noticed nowadays. Mm. Mm. They would do anything to get noticed. It's and, and of course, is that lack of being grounded in hardcore values of knowing yourself, knowing your identity, mm -hmm. knowing where you come from, and knowing what you stand for. Um, I've seen so many people do so many stupid things in the name of trying to get recognized on yeah. social media. And I, just, and I just wonder every time I see uh, any of those videos, man or woman, I just wonder, I said 20 years from now, if you live to see uh, the next 20 years, you're going to regret doing what you're doing. Very, very well. Because the very internet well. never forgets here, Tunde. It reminds you. You're going to wake up one day, you're going to decide, I'm going to be responsible with my lives now. No, no, no. It and my life you. now. And I then people will say, <laughs> we remember all the things they used to do. Of I mean, course. aren't you the guy who was dancing at the market, <laughs> pranking people, doing this, doing that? So it's better you be yeah. responsible now to have... Um, so, and of course, you don't have your past haunting you. God never forgets, also. <laughs> Most importantly. Most importantly. Anyway, <laughs> All right. That's our two cents on this one. We'll be back in a moment with our first conversation on Safia Breakfast Show. So join us again. Calm down. Oh, yeah, make gonna bring out on her phone. Dial star eight nine four star one ash to open your first money wallet. This money, if you like rock cash, you, you fit with drum, pay bills, or even transfer himself. I don't pay all of now. I beg you five bosa for first money wallet. Enjoy the unlimited life with First Money Wallet. Dial star 894 star 1 hash on any mobile phone to activate now. You first. First Bank. My name is Atiku Abubakar. The year 2023 is a defining moment for our great country, Nigeria. I am inspired by the compelling need to provide leadership that will propel Nigeria to greater heights, to overcome our challenges, and together as one recover and rebuild a united, strong, and prosperous Nigeria. I thank God for his infinite mercies and congratulate all Nigerians for surviving the harrowing experience imposed on our people for over seven years. Do not despair. Hope is in the horizon. PDP shall make things right again. On behalf of myself, my family, and our great party, the PDP, I urge you to support our noble cause to recover and rebuild Nigeria for a prosperous 2023 and beyond. A happy, prosperous new year to you all. 
as one, we can get it done. Welcome back to the program. South Africa Quick Show is coming to you from our studio here in Abaja Bure Hills. And of course, a reminder, you can watch the show on the go on Facebook and on YouTube. Join our streams, facebook.com forward slash Safi on TV Gotel and on YouTube, uh, Gotel TV Live. Subscribe and like that page and you can stay up to date with the conversations uh, on the go. And you can also, of course, catch up on our past conversations on those streams. Let's talk politics. Let's talk about the 2023 general elections and the state of the nation, politically speaking, especially as we take uh, stock of what has been an engaging uh, and, of course, very tense uh, political season, especially as the campaigns come to a head, uh, counting down to February uh, 24 for the first round of the open ballot. I would uh, give Nigerians the opportunity to choose the next president alongside uh, their choice for members of House of Representatives as well as senators and subsequently would have the gubernatorial elections as well as the state House of Assembly uh, elections. But let's speak to the developments within the political uh, scene. We've seen a variety of um, takes, narratives, and rhetorics that have been bandied around inundating the polity as Nigerians consider their choices going to the polls. But what do we make of the quality of the engagements that we've seen so far, and how um, can Nigerian youths and women make the most of uh, the opportunity right now, given how high the stakes are? going into this year's general election. Joining us on the program is a political commentator and someone who understands pretty much uh, what's going on right now. Comrade Andrew Haman is joining us uh, this morning. Good morning to you and thank you very much for Good morning. on the program. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. First, uh, let's get your take on what you make of the political atmosphere in Nigeria right now. The elections are just around the corner next month. Ready or not, the elections are going to uh, kick off. What do you make of the atmosphere right now in Nigeria? Mm, once more, good morning, Nigeria. I want to first and foremost appreciate TV Gotel for the effort in political cycle because they have been the watchdog of the society. We all know presently is. Uh, the moment of politics activity, so we have less than 50, or, or we have less than 50 days to election. If you see all through within the country what is happening, everybody is focusing. People are aligned from this political party to this political party. But one thing I understand, the youths are more or less focused this time. Unlike before, they were distracted with some other things. You see this political party is dragging, this one is dragging, but the youth are still focused and calm to us, especially where the political party they belong to. If you go to other political parties like PD, you see them, they are calm, they are PC too, they are doing great. So I see more 